नमस्ते माय नेम इज अदिति शर्मा एंड वेलकम टू बिजनेस कीरा इन द क्वांटम वर्ल्ड द प्राइमरी प्रॉब्लम इज टू फाइंड द स्टेट ऑफ अ सिस्टम एंड बाय द टर्म द स्टेट ऑफ अ सिस्टम आई स्ट्रिक्टली मीन दैट गेटिंग द नॉलेज अबाउट द इंडिपेंडेंट फैक्टर्स एंड आल्सो दैट हाउ दे विल बी वेरी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम बिकॉज़ विद द हेल्प ऑफ दोस इंडिपेंडेंट फैक्टर्स यू कैन टेल एवरी सिंगल डिटेल अबाउट द सिस्टम एट द डिफरेंट टाइम्स In the perturbation theory, we first work on finding the very initial state of a system before any perturbation was made to it. That is, before making any observation, because we know that in the quantum world, observations alter the state of a system, and then we follow a set of procedures to obtain an approximate solution for the perturbated state. So now, the time to get this specific about the non-degenerate perturbation theory in order to find that where and at what state and at what corresponding energy. your system will land at after you disturb its state once or twice or your wish definitely for sure here first we are going to derive a general formula and then we will use it later to find the energy and the state of a system after it has been perturbated once or twice in order to make it convenient we are starting with the eigen states that is we are assuming that initially our system is in such a state where it will be staying even after the perturbations or any transformations have been made Now, since there can be more than one of such states of a system, so we are talking about any another state for particular such that h zero sine zero is equals to e n zero sine zero, where the superscript zero shows that no perturbation has been made and the system is currently in its initial state. Now, for a set of orthonormal eigen functions, we can write that the inner product of sine zero and sine n zero will give you the Kronecker delta. satisfying the given condition now we change the potential slightly which means that the perturbation has been made over here and due to this what we get is h sin is equals to en sin now we get to a procedure which will help us to find out the perturbated states the first step which we will be following here is that h is equals to h0 plus lambda h dash now you see that the equation here in which H dash gives you the perturbation. H not, that is the H zero for you here, is the initial one, and H will give you the result which has been made after the perturbation. So, at the second step, we are going to be writing our state and the energy of the system at the nth level in the power series of lambda. So, sine is equals to sine zero plus lambda sine one plus lambda square sine two, and so on. Similarly, E n could also be written as E n zero plus lambda. E n one plus lambda square E n zero and so on. So we know that sine zero here shows that initial state of a system with no perturbation. That is when the perturbation was zero. E n zero will again uh, give you the energy corresponding to the state when there was no perturbation at all. So the zero at the superscript signifies no perturbation, and therefore the one at the superscript will show you the first order correction. that is when it was altered or perturbated once and then the value was reached and corrected at the third step we can write h sin is equals to e sin so now using the equations fourth and third in the above one what we get here is that h0 plus lambda h1 multiplied by the entire value of sin is equals to the energy value and that multiplied by the wave function so now what we are going here is that we will be separating them or we will be collecting them depending upon the powers of lambda so doing that on both the sides on the rhs and on the lhs you get to this equation and another thing is that in the next step we are going to be comparing the like powers of lambda so when it is lambda raised to the power 0 means when there is no lambda at all what you get is h0 sin 0 is equals to en0 sin 0 but this is what we already know so there is nothing new about it let's get to the lambda raised to the power 1 here so when we compare them this is what we get and similarly for the lambda square you have another equation so now we will use this to obtain the states and the energies corresponding to them after the perturbation so first order correction of energy from the equation fifth we already have that h0 sin 1 plus h1 sin 0 is equals to en0 sin 1 plus en1 sin 0 now in the first step take the inner product with sin 0 on both the sides when you do that you get to our equation which is like this and at the another state what we are going here is that so what does it mean here 
That is a basic question because we must know the meaning of every single mathematical term which we are writing over here. So, for the first term on the LHS, it tells you that the change caused in the H0 as the system changes the state from psi n0, that is from the initial to the perturbated one, which is the psi n1. Similar is what similar is with the one, the another term of LHS. And now talking about the RHS, then again, what we get here is that the inner product at the RHS of first term, we are again here talking about the change which is caused in EN0, that is energy, corresponding to the nth state as the system changes its state from psi n0 to psi n1, that is the perturbated one. Now, in the next step, since H0 is Hermitian, so definitely by property, we know this thing already and also we know another thing corresponding to the EN0 as well. So, on comparing the two, you can clearly write that since H0 psi N0 is equal to EN0 psi N0, so that implies that the inner product of psi N0 with H0 psi N1 will give you EN0 and then followed by the inner product of psi N0 and the psi N1. So now, using this thing, the equation becomes means here we are exploiting the Hermitian condition. We get that the inner product of psi n0 h dash psi n0 and that is equals to e n1 and followed by the inner product. Now that the inner product is actually equals to 1. So you can clearly write that e n1 is equals to the inner product of psi n0 h dash and psi n0. So what this thing is telling you here is that so talking in the context of energy, what we are going to do here is that we will take our system to the original state, that is the initial state, and there we will work upon the perturbated value which is the actual approach for the perturbation theory. So now we are going to be talking about the first order correction of the wave function. So again from the equation fifth, what you already have is that h0 psi n1 plus h dash psi n0 is equals to e n0 psi n dash psi n1 sorry plus e n1 psi n0. Now in the first step clearly we have done nothing but some rearrangements. So we have got to this equation. So in the next step what we see from here is that since the psi n1 satisfies this equation so definitely its linear combination is also going to be satisfying the given equation and then let that be psi n1 plus alpha psi n0 be another solution of that. Also, since the unperturbated wave functions, they make a complete set, that is any other wave function, be it psi n1 for now, be, can be expressed as a linear combination of them. So using this, what we can write here is that, that psi n1 is equal to the summation, when n is not equal to m, that is a prior condition, cmn psi m0, where the cm term it signifies your constants. Now, in the next step, we have already considered that psi n0 and psi n0, they are our unperturbated states which are eigen in nature. So therefore, they must satisfy the Schrodinger equation. So using this fact together with the above relation of the equation 8, what you get here is that the summation when m is not equal to n, h0 minus e n0, cmn psi n0 is equal to the negative of h dash plus h dash minus e n1 outside psi n0. So, corresponding to psi m0, what we get here is that from the above equation that the summation when m is not equal to n, e n0 minus e n0 c n n and psi m0 which is equal to the negative of h dash minus e n1 psi n0. So, this is what you get to here. And now taking the inner product with the psi l0, what we have here is that means we are talking about any other one now. So, what we get here is that the summation term will remain as such and then you got to this another which you are doing the inner product. So now, what we get to see here in this particular region is that if you consider the L is equal to M for the LHS part, so what you get here is that the EM0 will get converted to the EL0 minus EL0 will remain as such. The CNN will become the CLN and for the other part, since it is L is equal to M, so that inner product will give you the value 1, so just drop it here. And for the RHS term, what we have got here again is that, since the two states are going to be perpendicular to each other, so the second term of the RHS will vanish. And when we talk about the first term, we have written it here as such. Now, proceeding further, 
again placing l is equals to m we get means we are reverting our, the assumption which we have just made what we get is that c n raised to n that is equals to the inner product term divided by e n 0 minus e n 0 so using this 10th equation in the ninth one you get the value of your wave function for the first perturbated state means it is the first order correction for your state so the denominator term will not vanish as long as the unperturbated energy spectrum corresponding energy corresponding to the energy eigenstates is non-degenerate. So that's all. I think that by now you must have learned that how you can find out the approximated state and the corresponding energies of the system even after disturbing its initial state with the help of certain procedures. In this video, I have only elaborated that how you can find out uh, the state of a system and the energy corresponding to it when you have perturbated the system only for the one time. But by following the similar set of procedures, you can find out that the higher order corrections as well. And if you don't believe me, then try figuring it out yourself. And also, do share this video with those of your friends who love the quantum world and definitely like and subscribe.